AT offers three ways of attending college. First, we have our online, which is completely asynchronous, meaning doesn't matter if you want to do your work at 3 a.m., 7 a.m., noon, or 4 p.m. You do it when you want to do it. There are due dates, but the work is up to you to do it at your convenience. Traditional, which is the class meets two or three times a week with minimal online requirements. And this emphasizes the face-to-face -face interaction between teachers and students. And you see this most commonly in practical nursing and um, physical therapist assistant and diagnostic medical sonography. Finally, we have hybrid classes, and these meet once a week for a face-to-face -face component, and the rest of the work is done online. So you have the benefit of having your instructor every week keeping tabs on what's going on, but you also have the flexibility and freedom to do what you need to do at the time that works for you. So before we move into the actual programs we offer, I just wanted to point out that all of the credits taken at PIT are transferable and we accept all college credits from accredited colleges and universities. We have transfer agreements with the colleges listed on this chart. So if they have um, a if you have a transcript and you went to Temple for a while, I will look at it and it's almost a guarantee that your college credits that are applicable to your program will be accepted. There are a couple exceptions. If you fail the class, obviously not going to make it. Um, but you also have to keep in mind that science credits must be less than five years old because things are changing very rapidly. So there's multiple ways of attending school beyond online and asynchronous and synchronous. So we have 100% online, which I've already talked about, in-person, which I've already talked about. And then what we developed during the pandemic was an online virtual with live instruction. We have an optional version and a required version. So if you are somebody who is uh, nervous about math or nervous about anatomy and physiology, you can, from the comfort of your bedroom, living room, kitchen, backyard, um, Aruba, beachfront hotel, you can watch the instructor uh, lecture, answer questions, interact, and if you can't be there for whatever reason, all of the classes are recorded. Same thing with um, the next one, but we do require you to show up at a designated class time and the teacher wants you there. So, and that's usually, again, something like uh, anatomy and physiology, which is um, a very complicated class. So in addition to these, all PIT instructors are available at designated times and posted each week for office hours. Simply send your instructor an email to schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting by phone or video chat. So even if their office hours don't work for you because you have a job that con conflicts or you have um, a five-year-old making you crazy at 3.30 every day, you know, the instructors are wonderful and they will totally work with you to find a good time to connect. So I'm going to talk about associate degree programs and specifically allied health, behavioral health, general studies, healthcare management, health science, and psychology and human services. So starting with allied health, having an associates of science degree allows graduates to move up their career ladder and they will often earn more money. So how does this work? There's three ways of getting an Allied Health Associates of Science. One, you complete your practical nursing program and you earn your practical nursing certificate. Two, you complete a, your CMA certificate, so clinical medical assistant. The third way is to just enroll in Allied Health, and there are 
the um, 60 credits within that program as a standalone. So for someone who is really interested in working in healthcare, they will oftentimes want their employees in healthcare to have higher education um, credentials because as we have seen in other options, um, the more education a person has in healthcare, the better the outcomes for the patients. And that's why things like that tend to be very popular. Next, we have healthcare management, which I like to think of it as the healthcare program for people who don't like bodily fluids. So healthcare management allows you to work on the business side of things, specifically with insurance and ICD and CPT coding, working with the strategic aspects of healthcare. And, you know, management is something that is always going to be needed. And we see a lot of folks come in who maybe don't have the physical stamina to stand up eight hours a day, but definitely want to work in healthcare. And this is a great option for them. Behavioral health associate degree. This degree is really great for people who want to do two years of school, get their degree, and then go out and start helping and working with people. A lot of our students who've gone through this program have opted to take a certification in addiction um, so they can work at um, rehab facilities. So it's really one of those things where, you know, if you find that you have a calling for this kind of helping people without the bodily fluids, uh, this is a great field to get into. Um, and, you know, if at some point you decide you want to go on and get your bachelor's or even master's, you'll be able to do that with the degree um, credits. Health Science Associate Degree. This prepares students for admission to the PTA program, the DMS program, that's the Diagnostic Medical Sonography, and other highly competitive medically related programs, um, even those that are not at PIT. So graduates of this program are also qualified for many non-clinical positions with healthcare providers, including health and wellness counselors, community relations, health service coordinators. But to um, get back to the PTA, the DMS program, you know, the prerequisites are embedded in the health science program. So for students who are taking um, health science with the intention of moving into PTA or DMS, you don't take the whole curriculum, you only take certain classes. Psychology and Human Services, Associate of Science. This provides a comprehensive understanding of mental health, and it really prepares students who wanna get their bachelor's degree in psychology, sociology, or a related field. While it is possible to go out and get a, a job in when you complete this program, it really is designed to prepare you for those upper level classes for your bachelor's degree. So what happens if you're not sure? And you know, this is one of those conversations I've had with many, many young people and older people about, you know, I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to, I don't want to spend my life hating my job. Well, don't worry too much because jobs are constantly evolving. 25 years ago, most of the computer jobs that exist today did not even have existence whispered into them. So if you're not sure about what you wanna do, but you do know that getting a degree is important, you can look at the general studies program. This is the kind of program that allows you to build your own program. So for example, let's say you're interested in science, but you're not sure if you wanna to go towards healthcare or forensic science. Well, you can take a science track with a bunch of different classes. The point of a general studies program is you figure out what you like to do. Now, the interesting thing is that the vast majority of people in this country who graduate with a general studies degree end up getting really interesting jobs because they've learned how to learn. 
which is really important. They didn't learn one thing. They learned many things. And that robust education allows people to, to really become better thinkers, to literally become smarter. So next we'll talk about diagnostic medical sonography, or DMS as we like to call it. This is your program director, Denise Boyle, and she can tell you everything you ever needed to know about sonography and more. So what is ultrasound? It uses a transducer that emits sound waves to create images. So in other words, it's kind of a sonic picture. There's no radiation or biohazards associated with these exams. So um, if you are concerned about radiation, those are some of those issues that uh, ultrasound doesn't deal with. In addition to large ultrasound machines, smaller portable ones have become popular options in athletics and the military. So the curriculum is a 15 month program, five terms. Students will graduate with an AS degree, an Associates of Science. And PIT is currently in the process of earning our KHEP accreditation, which is um, validates our students all over the country. Prerequisite classes are gonna start July, 2021. And the first DMS cohort will begin July, 2022. We have a selective admission, so you have to qualify. And that includes the classes that you have to take as your prerequisites. And we are in the process of acquiring our clinical sites. Prerequisites can be taken online, virtually, or in person. Major classes when you get into DMS will meet in person Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. So it is a full-time program once you get into the DMS section. So now we're gonna talk about the Clinical Medical Assistant Program, or as we call it, CMA. This is the CMA Program Director, Robin Tarpley. She manages the program and she is um, excellent in terms of knowing every answer a person could know. So before we get into the nitty gritty, we wanna kind of reflect on what a CMA does. They are part of the team in a doctor's office or a hospital, and they are primarily responsible for supporting the doctor and the office team. Now, there's two areas. First, administrative, answering phones, setting up appointments. But then there's also the clinical side, where they take the patient back to the examining room. They take the patient's vital signs. They record all of the information in the um, electronic medical records. So there's a lot going on for a CMA and it's a great job for someone who likes to be busy. The other important thing is being able to maintain confidentiality because, um, you know, you're going to hear things and see things that are just outside of your realm of reference and you have to learn how to process that without blabbing to everyone. So the clinical medical assistant typically performs the following tasks. They record patient history and personal information. They measure vital signs, help physicians with patient examinations, give patients injections or medications. They do the scheduling. They prepare blood and urine samples for lab tests. They enter the information into the medical records. And then of course, the two biggies, phlebotomy, where you're drawing blood, and EKGs. So the program <clears throat> focuses on these areas by term. So the first term is primarily lecture, and that's where you get um, information about anatomy and physiology, the um, requirements for being a CMA, all the things that CMAs do. And then the second term, you're in lab. You're learning how to draw blood, you're learning how to give EKGs, and you are learning all the clinical laboratory information. Your third term, you go on 
clinical externship where you meet at a physician's office, you have somebody who works with you and you learn what it is to be in the situation. Some of our extern sites offer experiences in internal medicine, pediatrics, dermatology, and cardiology. Um, dermatology is a really interesting one because you don't always imagine what you think is going to be um, going on. So for example, at a dermatology office, they may have a lot of people coming in with acne, but they also have people coming in with burns and scars and um, they want to have them removed. So dermatologists have a very interesting practice. So when you are complete your program, you qualify to take any number of certifications that include certified clinical medical assistant, certified phlebotomist, certified EKG technician. So when you finish, the college will send your transcript to the National Health Career Association. And that means you are eligible to take their certification exam. We, as the college, cover one of your certification exams because we want you to be certified. And that's included in your tuition, so we highly recommend getting at least one certification. We've had lots of students who've gotten more than one, and it really helps in their pursuit of their career. Uh, going forward, we're looking to add another certification opportunity for students with certified health coaching. And that will also be included in the CMA program because a lot of times you need to be the educator for the patient and explain things because the doctor is super busy and doesn't always have the time. So we're gonna talk about the pathway to practical nursing at PIT. So this is your pre-nursing program director. This is Robin Tarpley, and uh, she manages your curriculum until you are accepted to the nursing program. Once you get into the nursing program, you'll be working with Dr. Danielle Giuliano. So the first question is, do you have what it takes? When you become a practical nurse, you will enter a field that requires brains, compassion, and above all, a good sense of humor. Because you're working with people who are sick that don't feel good. And of course, if you're sick and you don't feel good, oftentimes you're gonna be cranky. So as a nurse, you have to kind of roll with the punches in a sense. Because nursing is such an important job, there are many requirements from the federal government, the state government, and the state board of nursing. Everybody has something to say. To help you in the process, we will outline what you need to complete when you apply for the practical nursing program at PIT. So prior to COVID-19 pandemic, students were required to take AMP for practical nursing and submit a T-score of 55 or higher. With social distancing and quarantining, PIT has adjusted. So what we have decided to do is if you take the T's, you have to score 55 or above. Alternatively, we created a class using um, software from the company that gives the T's exam. And we have a class now called a T's equivalent, and that's AHT 180. You have to earn a C or higher, but that will replace your need for a T's exam. So if you're somebody who just hates exams, this is a good option. You'll still have plenty of exams to take once you get into the program, though. Fair warning. You will need to take anatomy and physiology for practical nurses and earn a minimum grade of a C. So if you do AMP for practical nursing and HT 180 and you get at least a C in both of those, you are accepted into practical nursing. Another alternative is the CMA pathway. So we accept a CMA certification through these four organizations and one year of work and you will be automatically accepted into the practical nursing. Um, these are situations where, you know, you've worked in the field, you have a lot of skill sets, and it's just a matter of fine-teening and teaching you the stuff that nurses do. Uh, 
So other certifying bodies uh, will be assessed on a case by case basis. So if you have your um, certification through a company that's not on here, don't panic, just talk to your enrollment specialist. A whole bunch of non healthcare requirements because remember, nursing is one of those fields where you literally hold the safety of the patients in your hands. You need an official high school transcript or GED diploma with scores. You need to get a criminal background check through the FBI, a criminal background check through the state of Pennsylvania, drug clearance, child abuse clearance. You cannot owe payments to the college. And if you are a high school graduate from a foreign country or have an out of state GED, you must obtain a certificate of preliminary education from the Pennsylvania Department of Ed. Now, the healthcare requirements are also extensive. You need a physical exam by a licensed healthcare provider, drug tests demonstrating no drug usage. CPR healthcare provider certification, flu vaccine, tetanus diphtheria vaccine, TB screening, and a titer blood test with documentation validating your immunizations or boosters. Hello, we're going to be talking about the physical therapy assistant program next. And this is Kelly Thompson. She is the director of the PTA program. Um, and she is a PTA, so she is a great resource for anyone who is interested in this program. The PTA program prepares you for the high demand field of physical therapy. And what we do with this curriculum is we use science and evidence based information. This is very much focused on the anatomy and physiology and the kinesiology in one's body. So if you're not sure what a PTA does, they work as part of a team to provide physical therapy services under the direction and supervision of the physical therapist. To become a physical therapist, you have to get a doctoral degree. So you're in school for at least six to eight to 10 years. Um, and obviously a lot of people don't want to dedicate that much time um, to become, you know, an entry level in a particular field. Instead, this is an option for folks who are ready, willing, and able to go out to work as soon as possible. And as such, um, you know, we, as the PTA program, provide students that opportunity to hop and jump right over into a career in just two years. They implement selected components of treatment, obtain data related to the treatment provided, make modifications in selected treatments, and they work with everyone from newborns to the elderly. Now the most important thing on this slide is the fact that you must attend a CAPTI accredited PTA program, and that is required in order to take the certification or licensure. This is really important because if you don't have a CAPTI accredited PTA program, you can't take the certification. So we are, PIT is CAPTI accredited, and um, you know that is the kind of information you need to make sure you know in order to move forward in your selection of what you decide to do. In the PTA program, the first year you take your prerequisites, your classes like anatomy and physiology, kinesiology, um, psychology, math, English, you know, the required courses. Those courses then help you move in to PTA because you need to ensure that you have a decent GPA to move into the program. Students are successfully prepared during their second year for the PTA certification licensure. And as such, when you complete, we notify CAPTI, they will allow you to take the licensure exam, and then you have a variety of places that you can choose to work in. Um, sports and fitness facilities, a lot of people who are in PTA 
um, have experience working in these uh, places. And this is kind of a step up for some people. They go from being a trainer to a therapist assistant. So there are a lot of different things you can do with this type of a job. Now we're going to talk about the Cannabis Studies Program. This is Lou Giannotti. He is our program director for Cannabis Studies. He is a registered pharmacist who has also worked in the cannabis industry. So our cannabis uh, curriculum has three tracks, cannabis business, health, and horticulture. Everyone takes the cannabis core classes the politics, history, and ethics of the cannabis industry, the science of medical cannabis, horticulture one, horticulture two, and legal aspects of alternative health therapies. In addition, so with cannabis business, it can involve many things from being an entrepreneur and starting your own business to managing an operation or dispensary or working in a dispensary. Cannabis jobs have grown 161% in the last four years, which really is just um, unheard of. So some of the titles, if you were to look them up, include bud tender, uh, retail marketing, accounting, dispensary or facility management, inventory management. That's huge because, you know, with cannabis, your inventory is everything. Entrepreneurship, packaging, administrative services, client services, and you know, all of this comes into play as the cannabis industry gets more and more legal in the sense. So, um, you know, there's been states have legalized it medically and recreationally, and the federal government is now looking at ways to uh, move towards a legal cannabis uh, experience. So we'll see what that plays. The cannabis business classes include the health therapies one and two, marketing, managing retail services and dispensaries, uh, introduction to business, office software, financial accounting um, with QuickBooks, macroeconomics and entrepreneurship. So you know, if you in your own head have this idea of a business you'd like to start, this is the kind of program that really benefits people. Cannabis health, um, we have, they have a new term called med tender. Uh, it's someone who works in a dispensary but specializes in the medical side of things. Um, and again, retail marketing, dispensary management, dispensary agent, patient care representatives, uh, working for doctors who uh, may not be as well versed, entrepreneurship opportunities, working in healthcare, holistic health centers, spas and wellness centers, um, already doing a lot of stuff with CBD. So, um, you know, as things become more legal, it'll certainly open up the market. So the classes that the cannabis health folks take that are specific, um, alternative health therapies one and two, marketing, managing, anatomy and physiology, chemistry, healthcare, mathematics, psychology, and healthcare statistics. So it really provides people with a full breadth of classes in case they want to move on and get their bachelor degree. And we have Cannabis horticulture, which is the newest addition to our cannabis family. Some of the career opportunities are really interesting, um, including trimming and packaging, cultivation, production, processing, and extraction technicians. So if you've ever seen the cartridges, uh, there's this oil and that has to be extracted from the plants. And that's what somebody who, um, you know, is heavy into the chemistry and the the lab side of things would find very interesting. So the horticulture classes are very specific. 
uh, botany, soil fertility, irrigation principles, plant genetics, plant harvesting and extraction. Uh, and then of course, you know, agribusiness, accounting with QuickBooks, food and agricultural laws and policies and office software applications. And now we move on to the bachelor degree programs. We have two bachelor degrees. The first is an RN to BSN, which is a next step in the career ladder for a nurse. So the bachelor's level nurses gain abilities beyond nursing and focus much more on case management, critical thinking, health promotion, and leadership. The second bachelor degree is General Studies Bachelor of Arts, and this is intended as a degree completion program. So if you have a bunch of credits from a different school or from different schools, we can look at your credits and assess how many classes you would need to take to complete your bachelor's degree. So here are the program directors. On the left is Dr. Danielle Giuliano. She, of course, manages the RN to BSN program. And then on the right is Rochelle Chaikin, who is also the Associate Dean, and she manages the BA in General Studies. So both of these bachelor's degrees are online for your convenience, and this allows you to decide when you're going to study. So if you're the kind of person who at 5 a.m. your eyes pop open and you're ready to go, this is a great opportunity. If you're the kind of person who doesn't even get going till 10 or 11 at night, again, this allows you to study and learn when you are ready. There is a short clinical requirement in the RN to BSN program that usually can be completed while you're at work. Instructors and tutors are available for consultation and assistance through Zoom to better accommodate the students' busy schedules. So we have our instructors, we have our tutors, but we also have academic support coaches. And those are the folks on the right. They are there for you to assist you virtually in overcoming any issues that are preventing your academic success. So for example, you're having um, issues with your financial aid and you need assistance filling something out. That's the kind of help they can provide. So they're all very good and very helpful. So to go into a little more detail about why somebody would want to get a BSN, it's because of the research and the evidence that has demonstrated that BSN prepared nurses tend to have better outcomes for their patients. So it doesn't matter if you are working in a residential facility, a hospital, this education level has shown that there is a 10% increase in BSN prepared nurses, you will see a 5% decline in patient mortality. Other studies have demonstrated that patients of BSNs tend to have less pressure ulcers, post-operative deep vein thrombosis, and hospital infections. Prior to obtaining a BSN, RNs earn an average of just about 71,000, and afterwards they'll earn 77,000 on average. So there's a lot of really good reasons why a BSN can be advantageous to your career. So here are some of the classes that you would be taking as a part of your BSN. There are some unique things such as medical cannabis and pain management, stress management for healthcare providers. Um, and then you're also going to see a, a very deep look at things like holistic health nursing, genetics of addiction, global health policy. So all of these things come into play towards getting that bachelor's degree. In order to qualify for this program, you must have an RN license, which you will receive 40 college credits for. You can then also transfer an additional 50 credits for a maximum of 90 credits.
The Bachelor of Arts in General Studies is set up to accommodate most classes. There are a lot of electives. Some electives are based on arts and culture, some are history, some are science. So we try to offer enough of a structure so you can kind of figure out on your own where your credits are going to go. But more importantly, when we get your transcripts, then we can do it officially. So uh, if you are interested in either of these options, you should take your previous college transcripts, send them to your admissions representative, and then the program directors will determine what qualifies for transfer. Science classes must be less than five years old due to rapid changes in the modern world. And both bachelor level programs will accept up to 90 college credits from colleges and universities that hold a higher education accreditation. And to qualify for a transfer, you must have earned a C or higher. Hi, my name is Kamara Evans, and I'm the Director of Student Affairs at the Pennsylvania Institute of Technology. I first want to say welcome to PIT. We're very glad to have you as a part of our community. And I also wanted to take this opportunity to just give you a brief overview about the types of services that Student Affairs offers. The mission of PIT is student success. And so the mission of Student Affairs is to support all of our students from their first day of class all the way through to graduation. Our department provides academic support um, from the beginning of class. So assisting you on where you can purchase your textbooks, information on honor societies, registration assistance, term to term, to make sure that you are on track for graduation and are taking the proper courses in the proper sequence, as well as helping you address concerns, both academic and personal, both in class and out. If we are not able to assist you personally, we have a network that we can refer you to to help make sure that your needs are addressed. We also offer tutoring support. Uh, so if you hit a snag in a class or you just would like a concept to be reconfirmed, we have a full tutoring staff available to assist you. We also offer career and transfer assistance. So if you think that you might be interested after graduation in working in a particular uh, company, or you think you might after graduation be interested in moving for a four-year degree, we have um, a department here that can assist you with that. We also, again, connect you with external resources whenever possible, if it's not something that we can do ourselves within the building. Uh, and we also, in the Department of Student Affairs, offer the TRIO SSS program, which is a federal program funded by the Department of Education that offers additional academic supports for those who qualify. Of course, college is about more than just hitting the books, and so we try to keep you engaged and connected with PIT as a community. Just a couple of ways that we do that is through our Student Ambassadors Program, our One Book, One PIT Program, uh, we offer mindfulness moments as well as mental health resources and our weekly cyber cafes to allow you to connect virtually with our staff and your classmates. If you need to reach anyone within the department, our contact information is listed below. You can reach us via phone, text, email, or Zoom at any point. Uh, all you have to do is just reach out or schedule an appointment. You will be hearing from your academic support coach uh, as you move forward in the enrollment process. Teresa Fleming uh, handles students' last names A through G. Rosie Marcher has last names H through O. Garrison Lockley, uh, who is also our tutorial coordinator, has last names P through Z. And Orneno Wright is our career and transfer coach. So if you have any questions uh, regarding what you life might look like after graduation, she is definitely your contact person for that. Again, Thank you so much for listening and welcome to PID.